I kind of want to do a rare direct sequel with this week's diatribe, because last week we talked about the ever-increasing need for robust communities for atheists to join, and we got a lot of really good responses to it, but in a lot of ways, they were the wrong kind of good responses. I mean, I didn't go through all 600 ways there are to get in touch with me online and crunch the numbers or anything, but I'd say approximately three quarters of the feedback that we got on that diatribe were from very enthusiastic people looking for advice on how to start a group in their area, and that's awesome. We need enthusiastic people to start groups, but just fucking definitionally, we need a far greater number of enthusiastic people to join existing groups. And we got very little feedback comparatively from people who wanted to know how to find a group, how to join a group, how to be a good member of a group, how to influence a group towards positive secular goals, etc. And when you talk to community organizers and atheism, you hear about this problem constantly. Our collective instinct is to start rather than to join. I've heard dozens of stories of people starting groups in their city only to find out six months or a year later that the exact same group already existed. Hell, I was hanging out with a few friends in the community this week musing about this topic, and one of them told me that the atheist group that she's involved in is actually the remnants of three failing groups that Voltron together and were probably failing at least to some extent because they were competing with one another. I mean, think about the statistics on this one. I don't don't have the exact numbers. I can't imagine how you'd get them even. But the overwhelming majority of secular meetups, skeptics in the pub groups, atheist service organizations, whatever, fall apart in less than a year. And in my experience, this can happen even when all the founding members are super enthusiastic about the group's mission. It's just really hard to consistently find the time and the resources to keep things going. People move away or they move on and they're not always replaced. So No matter how good a job you might do as the group's creator, statistically speaking, you'd probably have done more by being an enthusiastic member of a group that already survived for more than a year. Now, to be fair, there are a few downsides to joining an existing group that you can avoid by starting something new, right? Groups that have been around for a while and have more than half a dozen members tend to have some amount of lingering drama that you have to learn to navigate. And there's animosities and disagreements and power struggles and factions and bullshit. That's just inevitable in any sufficiently large human community. And if you start something with a small core group of friends that you already get along with, you can more or less avoid that stuff. You know, at least at first, right? It'll creep in over time if you're successful, but you have time to get used to it. You don't have that initial blast of 10 years of pent up shit hitting you on your way in the door. There's also the question of compromise, right? Odds are that there's no group that's doing exactly what you want to do in the exact way that you want to do it. Working with existing groups often means subordinating your own vision to somebody else's. Of course, a group that you start will eventually mean the same thing again if it succeeds, but at least by then you'll have the advantage of momentum in terms of your initial inspiration. Now, Both of these drawbacks are problems with communities in general rather than this or that community, but they can still act as impediments to joining. But it's not like we even really need impediments, right? Like as a group, we tend not to be joiners. The thing that unites atheists is, after all, rejection. We rejected an idea, and many of us in so doing rejected a whole community. And since then, whether we wanted to or not, most of us learned that we can live without a community. We can exist on our own, and that in many ways, we're stronger on our own, right? Fucking communities can fail you. They can reject you or belittle you or try to change you or abandon you. And so we've convinced ourselves that we don't need community to begin with, and we certainly don't need someone else's vision of a community imposed on us. But see, When we join secular communities, we take as much power as we give. We put ourselves in a position where we can now influence the group, right? where we can help choose its path, its leadership, help maybe even be its leadership. And when it's a community that makes no pretension to divine ordination, at least, it knows that you can just walk away whenever you want and take 123rd or 158th or 106th of the group with you when you go. You have a kind of leverage that you don't have when the group's leader speaks for an omnipotent God. And of course, the other big advantage to joining rather than creating is that it takes a lot less of your time, right? You can join four or five or six fucking groups for the same time investment it takes to start a single good one that meets once a month. Now, it's doubtful that many of you live in a place where there's such an embarrassment of riches when it comes to secular groups, but I also think it's important that we don't limit ourselves just to those, right? As much as atheist groups need more members, the one thing we can generally say for them for certain is that they have good atheist representation, 
right? So joining community service groups or hobby groups or book clubs or whatever can also be really impactful from an atheist perspective if you're someone that can be open about your atheism. If you've ever been involved in a technically secular community group, you know that religious people have no issue whatsoever with trying to hijack them to talk about Jesus shit. Having examples within the group of open non-believers that are volunteering their time, being supportive community members, otherwise doing all the shit that the sanctimonious Christians are doing, that sends an important message that could be every bit as effective as the one that a good atheist group sends. My, my point here is that it, when we talk about communities, it's not just about how we need more communities. It's also about how communities need 